Welcome to the <clears throat> April 1st, 2024 meeting of Troy City Council. It is asked that you silence your cell phones during the meeting, please. Invoca invocation tonight will be by Mrs. Snee, and we have Preston and Carson from Troop 365 to lead us in the pledge. Please stand. Please join me in prayer. Gracious God, we meet together today as colleagues with a common goal of continued service to the citizens of our community. Help us to use our knowledge, reason, and skills to both listen and take action effectively. We pray for those who protect our nation, our state, and our community by serving in our military and protective services. We give thanks for all people who work in public service, especially those who work for our city. Recognizing that we live in challenging times and that many in our world are affected by injustice, tyranny, war, and oppression, we express our thanks for this opportunity to gather together where we can reinforce our community principles of openness and engagement for all people. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much. Mrs. Knight, would you please call the roll? Mr. Whitten? Here. Mrs. Snead? Here. Mr. Twist? Here. Mr. Sievert? Present. Mrs. Marshall? Here. Mr. Phillips? Here. Mrs. Westfall? Here. Mr. Pierce? Present. Mr. Schilling? Present. All members are present. Mrs. Knight, could you read a summary of the March 18th, 2024 meeting, please? Minutes of Council, March 18, 2024, committee reports, committee partnerships, committee recommended legislation be prepared regarding temporary activation of the DORA for uh, Treasure Island concerts. Mm -hmm. Finance Committee recommended legislation be prepared, <coughs> accepting the recommendations regarding the Enterprise Zone Agreements and the Troy Town Park too. Safety and Health Committee recommended legislation be prepared to adopt the 2024 Emergency Operations Plan. Streets and Sidewalks Committee recommended legislation be prepared, authorizing bidding for the Broadford Bridge Rehabilitation Project. The rules of council were adopted. Resolution number R12, 2024, Tax Incentive Review Council recommendation, first reading. Resolution R13, 2024, recommendation regarding the Troy Town Park TIF, first reading. Resolution number R14, 2024, bidding Broadford Bridge Project, first reading. Ordinance number 09, 2024, Emergency Operations Plan, first reading. Ordinance number 010, 2024, Treasure Island Non-Ticketed Use Agreements, first reading. Ordinance number 011, 2024, extending DORA for Treasure Island Park events, first reading. There was an executive session following, which, following comments and council adjourned at 9.02 p.m. To adopt the minutes. Second. <clears throat> motion to move. Motion to adopt by Mr. Phillips. Seconded by Mr. Twist. Mrs. Knight, please call the roll. Mrs. Snee? Yes. Mr. Twist? Yes. Mr. Sievert? Yes. Mrs. Marshall? Yes. Mr. Phillips? Yes. Mrs. Westfall? Yes. Mr. Pierce? Yes. Mr. Schilling? Yes. Mr. Whitten? Yes. Those minutes are approved. Mrs. Knight, could you read the <clears throat> minutes from the March 25th, 2024 special meeting of Council? Minutes of Council, March 25, 2024. Right. The reading and acknowledgement of the Notice of Special Meeting of Troy City Council was, took place. Resolution number R12, 2024, accepting recommendations of the Tax Incentive Review Council regarding Enterprise Zone Agreements was given second reading and adopted. Resolution number R13, 2024, accepting recommendation of Tax Incentive Review Council regarding Troy Town Park TIF was given second reading and adopted. Resolution number R14, 2024, bidding for the Broadford Bridge Reconstruction Rehabilitation Project was given second reading and was adopted. Ordinance number 09, 2024, adopting emergency operations plan for 2024 was given second reading and adopted. Ordinance number 010, 2024, executing Treasure Island non-ticketed use agreement for events was given second reading and adopted. Ordinance number 011, 2024, uh, extending the DORA for the Treasure Island use activities was given second reading and adopted. Council then adjourned at 6.10 p.m. Move to adopt. Second. 
Motion to adopt by Mr. Phillips, seconded by Mr. Schilling. Mrs. Knight, could you please call the roll? Mr. Twist? Yes. Mr. Sievert? Yes. Mrs. Marshall? Yes. Mr. Phillips? Yes. Mrs. Westfall? Yes. Mr. Pierce? Yes. Mr. Schilling? Yes. Mr. Whitten? Yes. Mrs. Snee? Yes. Minutes are adopted. Committee reports tonight. We have a few. We'll start with Mr. Pierce on Buildings and Utilities Committee. Thank you. Committee members Phillips and Pierce met March 25th to consider authorizing bidding for the roof maintenance projects that were included in the 2024 budget. The projects are discussed in the detailed report. Staff intends to build the two projects together as I'm sorry, staff intends to bid the two projects together as there may be some economies of scale in doing so. It is the recommendation of this committee that legislation be prepared authorizing the Director of Public Service and Safety to advertise for bids and enter into the contract for the City Hall recoding project at a cost not to exceed $100,000 and for the repairs to the coping and metal edging of the roof of the central service and maintenance facility at a cost not to exceed $90,000. Respectfully submitted by Councilman Phillips, Councilwoman Snee, and myself as Chair Samuel Pierce. Anybody have any questions? Okay. I move on to Community Partnerships Committee. Mrs. Marshall. Committee members Marshall and Twist met March 25th regarding the 2024 Troy Strawberry Festival to be held May 31st through June 2nd, 2024. The festival is to take place in both the downtown and levee areas. With the activation of an area of the Dora temporary boundary, the Troy Area Chamber of Commerce will be able to sell alcohol on the upper levee on June 1st and 2nd. The event will continue to provide an opportunity for local nonprofits to raise funds for community purposes while providing an opportunity for residents and visitors to come downtown to enjoy a variety of bands, support local businesses, and support the local nonprofit organizations. It is the recommendation of this committee that legislation be prepared <clears throat> authorizing the Director of Public Service and Safety to enter into an agreement with the Troy Area Chamber of Commerce for the 2024 Troy Strawberry Festival to provide for the standard notwithstanding legislation and authorize activation of a portion of the DORA temporary activation boundary. Committee supports emergency legislation so that the temporary alcohol permit application can be submitted without delay. Respectfully submitted, Mr. Sievert, Mr. Twist, and Mrs. Marshall, myself as chair. Any questions? That takes us to Mrs. Snee, I believe has an oral report. Uh, yes, this is an oral report from the Personnel Committee. Uh, the President of Council has provided Council with recommendations for two appointees to the Income Tax Board of Review. This board hears appeals of opinions of the City's Tax Administrator and is required by local ordinance and the Ohio Revised Code. Um, information has been given to Council members, so I would move that Council appoints Richard L. Kultheis, for a term that it, uh, expires December 31st, 2025, and also appoints Thomas M. Kendall for a term that expires December 31st, 2025, to the Income Tax Board of Review. Separate. Second. No, we, we should have that separate. Oh, do them separately? Yeah. Okay. So I will make okay. a motion that we appoint Richard L. Coltice to the Income Tax Board of Review for a term that ends December 31st, 2025. I'll be happy to second that. A motion to made by Mrs. Snee, seconded by Mr. <coughs> Phillips. Mrs. Knight, could you please call the roll? Mr. Sievert? Yes. Mrs. Marshall? Yes. Mr. Phillips? Yes. Mr. Westfall? Yes. Mr. Pierce? Yes. Mr. Schilling? Yes. Mr. Whitten? Yes. Mrs. Snee? Yes. Mr. Twist? Yes. Motion is approved. And Mr. President, I would move uh, that Council appoint Thomas M. Kendall for a term on the Income Tax Board of Review that would end December 31st, 2025. I'll second. Okay. Motion made by Mrs. Snee, seconded by Mrs. Westfall. Mrs. Knight, could you please call the roll on that? Mrs. Marshall? Yes. Mr. Phillips? Yes. Mrs. Westfall? Yes. Mr. Pierce? Yes. Mr. Schilling? 
Yes. Mr. Whitten? Yes. Mr. Snee? Yes. Mr. Twist? Yes. Mr. Siebert? Yes. Motion is approved. Mr. President, if I yes, could just add um, one other piece of information. This is a three-member board, and the third member is appointed by the Director of Public Service and Safety, and that member is Mark Douglas. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Brings us to community citizen comments on any agenda item we have tonight. Uh, this period will be limited to two minutes. If you would like to speak, please come to the podium. Give Mrs. Knight your name and address and uh, have your two minutes. Seeing none, we'll move on to our resolutions. Mrs. Knight, could you please read R15 2024? Resolution number R15 2024. Resolution authorizing the Director of Public Service and Safety of the City of Troy, Ohio, to advertise for bids and enter into a contract for the City Hall roof recoding project, not cost not to exceed one hundred thousand dollars. This is the first reading. Move to suspend the rules. Second. Motion to suspend the rules by Mr. Twist. Seconded by Mr. Uh, by Mr. Whitten. Seconded by Mr. Twist. This is not. Please call the roll. Mr. Phillips. Yes. Mrs. Westfall? Yes. Mr. Pierce? Yes. Mr. Schilling? Yes. Mr. Whitten? Yes. Mrs. Snee? Yes. Mr. Twist? Yes. Mr. Sievert? Yes. Mrs. Marshall? Yes. Move to adopt. Second. Motion to adopt by Mr. Twist, seconded by Mr. Schilling. Mrs. Knight, could you please call the roll? Mrs. Westfall? Yes. Mr. Pierce? Yes. Mr. Schilling? Yes. Mr. Whitten? Yes. Mrs. Snee? Yes. Mr. Twist? Yes. Mr. Sievert? Yes. Mrs. Marshall? Yes. Mr. Phillips? Yes. Resolution is adopted. Mrs. Knight, could you please read resolution R16-24? Resolution number R16-2024. Resolution authorizing the Director of Public Service and Safety of the City of Troy, Ohio, to advertise for bids and enter into a contract for the Central Service and Maintenance <coughs> Facility Roof Coping Repair Project. Costs not to exceed $90,000. First reading. Motion to suspend the rules. Second. Motion to suspend by Mr. Whitten. Seconded by Mr. Schilling. Mrs. Knight, could you please call the roll? Mr. Pierce? Yes. Mr. Schilling? Yes. Mr. Whitten? Yes. Mr. Snee? Yes. Mr. Twist? Yes. Mr. Sievert? Yes. Mrs. Marshall? Yes. Mr. Phillips? Yes. Mrs. Westfall? Yes. Move to adopt. Second. Motion to adopt by Mr. Twist, seconded by Mr. Whitten. Mrs. Knight, please call the roll. Mr. Schilling? Yes. Mr. Whitten? Yes. Mrs. Snee? Yes. Mr. Twist? Yes. Mr. Sievert? Yes. Mrs. Marshall? Yes. Mr. Phillips? Yes. Mrs. Westfall? Yes. Mr. Pierce? Yes. Resolution is adopted. Mrs. Knight, could you read the resolution in memoriam for former law director Robert A. McCarthy? A resolution in memoriam, Robert A. McCarthy, 1931-2024. Whereas the members of council for the city of Troy recognize on behalf of all Troy citizens the service to our city by the late Robert A. McCarthy, and whereas Robert A. McCarthy was a longtime resident of the city of Troy, adopting and supporting Troy as his hometown, and whereas Robert A. McCarthy served as a volunteer for a number of local or organizations for the benefit of the Troy community and citizens, including the Senior Citizen Center and the Troy Foundation. And whereas Robert A. McCarthy served his, county, his country with honor and distinction in the United States Navy, and whereas Robert A. McCarthy particularly served the city of Troy, Ohio, as a director of law from July 17, 1971 through December 31, 1979, and whereas Robert A. McCarthy was removed from our midst by death on March 18, 2024. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the Council of the City of Troy, Ohio, that this expression of appreciation for the dedicated service of Robert A. McCarthy to this city and the citizens of this community be extended with sincere sympathy to Mrs. Carol McCarthy and the family of Robert A. McCarthy. Be it further resolved that a notation of this resolution be placed in the official records of the City of Troy, Ohio, and that the Clerk of Councils hereby directed and instructed to forward a fully attested and signed copy of this resolution to the family of Robert A. McCarthy. Mr. President, I'd like to make a motion to approve the resolution Second. in memorandum for Mr. McCarthy. Second. 
Motion to approve the re resolution by Mr. Schilling, seconded by Mr. Twist. Mrs. Knight, could you please call the roll? Mr. Whitten? Yes. Mrs. Snead? Yes. Mr. Twist? Yes. Mr. Seaver? Yes. Mrs. Marshall? Yes. Mr. Phillips? Yes. Mrs. Westfall? Yes. Mr. Pierce? Yes. Mr. Schilling? Yes. Okay. I will pass this around to be signed. Moving on to ordinances. Mrs. Knight, could you read ordinance 012 2024, please? Ordinance number 012 2024, ordinance authorizing the use of public areas for the 2024 Troy Strawberry Festival. Notwithstanding conflicting provisions of the Troy codified ordinances, further approving the use of an area for the sale of beer subject to the issuance of proper permits by the state of Ohio and procurement of liquor liability insurance and authorizing the Director of Public Service and Safety of the City of Troy, Ohio, to enter into an agreement with the Troy Area Chamber of Commerce, therefore, and declaring an emergency. This is regarding the Troy Strawberry Festival that will be held May 31, June 1, June 2, 2024. First reading. Move to suspend. Second. Motion to suspend the reading of the rules by Mr. Schilling, seconded by Mr. Siebert. Mrs. Knight, could you please call the roll? Mrs. Snee? Yes. Mr. Twish? Yes. Mr. Sievert? Yes. Mrs. Marshall? Yes. Mr. Phillips? Yes. Mrs. Westfall? Yes. Mr. Pierce? Yes. Mr. Schilling? Yes. Mr. Whitten? Yes. Motion to approve. Second. Motion to approve by Mr. Whitten, seconded by Mr. Pierce. Mrs. Knight, could you please re <coughs> call the roll? Mr. Twist? Yes. Mr. Sievert? Yes. Mrs. Marshall? Yes. Mr. Phillips? Yes. Mrs. Westfall? Yes. Mr. Pierce? Yes. Mr. Schilling? Yes. Mr. Whitten? Yes. Mrs. Snead? Yes. The ordinance is adopted. Mrs. Knight, could you read? 013 2024, please. Ordinance number 013 2024. Ordinance permitting the use of certain property in the designated outdoor refreshment area for use as a designated outdoor refreshment area for the Troy Strawberry Festival on May 31, 2024 through June 2, 2024, and declaring an emergency. This is the first reading. Move to suspend. Second. Motion <clears throat> moved to suspend by Mr. Phillips, seconded by Mr. Pierce. Mrs. Knight, could you please call the roll? <coughs> Mr. Sievert? Yes. Mrs. Marshall? Yes. Mr. Phillips? Yes. Mrs. Westfall? Yes. Mr. Pierce? Yes. Mr. Schilling? Yes. Mr. Whitten? Yes. Mrs. Snead? Yes. Mr. Twist? Yes. Move to adopt. Second. <laughs> Motion to move to be adopted by Mr. Whitten, seconded by Mr. Schilling. Mrs. Knight, could you please call the roll? Mrs. Marshall? Yes. Mr. Phillips? Yes. Mrs. Westfall? Yes. Mr. Pierce? Yes. Mr. Schilling? Yes. Mr. Whitten? Yes. Mrs. Snee. Yes. Mr. Twist? No. Mr. Sievert? Yes. Ordinance is adopted. Mrs. Knight, do we have any communications or announcements? Only the reminder of filing of the financial disclosure statements if you have not done so. <laughs> Mayor Oda? Um, only to, in the vein of the uh, Strawberry Festival, I know our Strawberry Festival people are out here in the audience. Um, last week was the Queen's Pageant, and the young ladies from the county schools all participated in that. Uh, very fun evening, uh, just to get things kicked off, and congratulations to those who will be representing the Troy Strawberry Festival. Thank you. Director of Public Service and Safety. I have nothing this evening. Thank you. Director of Law. Um, Mr. President, I have nothing this evening. Thank you. All right. Mr. Friggy is not here. My only comments tonight are intended to, to uh, remind those that come to the meetings, watch the meetings, or are interested in our city, that Troy is a statutory city which follows the Ohio Revised Code. As outlined in the Chapter 7, Section 705.72, are the responsibilities and authority of City Council. Those responsibilities and authority of City Council and le are legislative. Put simply, your elected council members act upon legislation that is brought before this body. Day-to-day -day operations, 
are the, are the city are handled by the city staff, which solely answers to the director of public service and safety, who in turn answers to the mayor, not council. Your concerns, questions, and ideas are always welcome. Thank you. And I believe Mrs. Westfall wants to make comments as well. Yes. I just want to make a statement. Uh, I did not have an opportunity to respond to comments by the community after last council meeting, and this statement is to clarify my position on the IOOF old courthouse stabilization. The mayor and director of public service and safety hired a lawyer at a cost of $20,000 to the taxpayer, taxpayers who released a statement of potential remedies for what he described as being in default of the agreement from December 22, 2023. Because we have a statutory form of government, as was just explained, the mayor and director of public service and safety are permitted to do this. As a council member, I was not informed nor notified of this information prior to its release to the parties it was directed at. As a result, it has been brought to my attention that Troy City Council as a whole appears to be in favor of these actions. I want to make it very clear that I do not support these actions by the city administration. I believe the THPA has been very diligent in their efforts to raise the needed funds and move forward with the required stabilization of the IOOF old courthouse building. This is evidenced by how much has been accomplished in a mere three, almost four months. When you consider that this building has been in disrepair for over 10 years, I believe this community should be wholeheartedly supporting the completion of this work. I'm supporting and encouraging the THPA efforts because it means that our main street will be open, that local businesses will be easily accessed, accessed and a tax paying tenant can be found for this building. There does not need to be a winner and a loser in the situation. We can all be winners. We can get on with being one of the most beautiful, charming, and historic downtowns in this country, a place that people want to visit. There is a new owner of the IOOF old courthouse building, the THPA. It was bought from a willing seller. The previous owner's circumstances no longer apply. I encourage the city administration to stop being litigious. This current restoration stabilization is the right thing for this community. It's time to move on. My hope is that the city administration allows the progress on this building to continue unhindered by more court battles that would only keep the street closed and pro prolong completion. Respectfully submitted. Any other council members? Mr. Whitten. Uh, I just wanted to mention something that Mr. Tennington didn't bring up that it is spring cleanup week in the city. I was uh, able to take advantage of this week. I encourage all citizens if they have uh, some extra stuff to put out. I know the rules are relaxed this week, so uh, please do so. Good idea. Good reminder. Mr. Schilling. He stole my thunder. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone else? Staff. Do we have any staff? Citizen comments. Please come forward, name and address. My name is Bradley Barron. I reside at 105 Crestwood Drive. I wasn't going to say anything about the IWOF old courthouse building tonight, but after hearing Mrs. Westfall's comments, I feel like I have to ask a favor of this council. I sent you all an email uh, some, a couple meetings ago with what I felt was a strongly held belief, and so far I've only gotten one response. Now, I don't want any responses here tonight, and I really don't want to go into a back and forth with you all on this, because this is something that's been beaten into the ground, so, and I know Mr. Rizal would probably appreciate that. Um, but I just want you to think about this. As I said in my email to you all, the time for platitudes is over. It is time for you as council members to hold the administration responsible. Hold their feet to the fire. Now, if I was up there on that dais in one of y'all's positions, I would be moving a vote of no confidence in our service and safety director every meeting. He, was, he has lost my confidence, and I'm not even a citizen, and that's saying something. 
Now, I know it's probably, going to, it's probably going to be seen as a reflection, but it's not. This is just my personal opinion. So I'm going to leave that there and just leave that where it is. That's my thoughts on that. The rest I would leave to Mr. Southerly, who is going to come after me. Another thing I, I, I'd like to discuss is something that's been near and dear to my heart that's not the IOOF old courthouse building, and that is I'm a trained weather spotter, and I've been so for about 15 years. I've been an amateur radio operator for 15 years. And I'd like to encourage everybody here and everybody at home, we've got some nasty weather coming up tomorrow. And I'd like to ask you, are you all storm ready? Are you all storm ready? Are you ready for that weather that's coming tomorrow? Because it's going to hit us if the models are right. I don't know about y'all. I've been, a, as I said, I've been a trained weather spotter ever since I got an amateur radio license back in 2009. Something I enjoy doing. I would like to encourage all of us to be storm ready because you never know when the next big tornado is going to hit. And there could be chances of some tomorrow. And on that note, Wednesday is a big anniversary. 50 years ago to the day, April 3rd, 1974, was one of the biggest tornado outbreaks until two, for, that held the record for 37 years until 2011, the Southeast USA tornado outbreak, where 300 and some odd tornadoes struck down. 148 tornadoes struck down that day. Now, I wasn't around then. I wasn't born until July of that year, so all of the facts I'm about to give you are things that I've researched over the years. As I said, 148 tornadoes struck down that day in an area from Kentucky all the way up into Canada, Missouri, or Michigan, Canada, Alabama, Georgia, Tennessee, all those areas were hit by 148 tornadoes, but two of them stand out to me. One is, of course, the Xenia tornado that we all know about. And then there was another one two of them actually. One hit Brandenburg, Kentucky, blew it to pieces, killed 32 people. But there was another one that hit Louisville, Kentucky, and it, it sticks out in my mind because there was actually, and you can go back and research recordings on this, there was actually a helicopter traffic reporter named Dick Gilbert for WHS HAS 840 AM out of Louisville, Kentucky, in the air doing traffic reporting all the time an F4 tornado was running through the eastern sections of Louisville. Now, if that isn't courageous or crazy, you tell me what is. I'm telling you, that's gutsy. So I'm encouraging all of you for this weather tomorrow to please get yourselves ready. Find your safe spot, know where you're going to go, and just be careful out there. That's all I've got. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Berenger. Anyone else? Good evening, Ben Shuttleley, President of the Troy Historic Preservation Alliance, 110 and a half West Main Street, Troy. Mr. Blesfall, thank you for your remarks. I appreciate those, and I know many of the citizens of Troy and Miami County do as well. We are currently 29 days out from deadline on the stabilization repair project at 112 to 118 West Main Street. I am pleased to report that we continue to be on schedule to complete the repairs prior to deadline. The work on the parapet facing West Main Street has been completed. Most, if not all, of the roofing is now on the building, and I believe crews were trying to get all the flashing in place between the two buildings before we get the heavy rains that are forecast. Tie-ins have been installed on both the front wall of the IOF building and on the upper area of the rear courthouse wall facing the Cherry Street parking lot. Ceiling joist replacement and repairs above the IOF third floor also are finished. Some additional work will happen on the front face of the IOF building early this month, including lentil repairs, tuck pointing, and window checks. If all goes according to plan and we experience no disruptions from weather or detractors, you can expect to see the scaffolding start to come down on the front of the building potentially as early as next week. From a fundraising standpoint, I'm pleased to share that $807,783 has been pledged toward this project, and we have an additional $50,000 in private loans arranged if necessary. Of the nearly $808,000 pledged, $765,000 has been collected. We continue to be humbled by the outpouring of support that we have received from 253 donors. 
This coming Saturday, April 6th, we invite you all to a Dine to Donate event at Heron's Market, and we anticipate at least one additional downtown fundraising event in April. Several of you have already contributed to this project. Thank you. And we would like to encourage all city officials to attend the event at Heron's this weekend as a show of support for getting West Main Street reopened as soon as possible. Because some of our funding for the building repairs is in the form of a loan, we continue to request donations from the public. Folks can sponsor RIC for $100 through our, our website, www.thpatroy.org. Despite the city administration's ongoing refusal to support the stabilization repairs as the fastest way to reopen West Main Street, THPA does appreciate the administration is now beginning to refer to the building as the IOF building, Old Miami County Courthouse, in recognition of its significant history. Baby steps. A hearing concerning Miami County's load test requirement is currently scheduled before Common Police Court Judge Stacy Wall this Friday, April 5th at 10 a.m. Uh, to reiterate, a load test on the building is duplicative and would unnecessarily cost THPA and its donors up to $50,000. There is no value in conducting a load test. It is a punitive measure, unprecedented in Miami County, that was inappropriately added as a condition to the building permit. While the city administration addressed some questions in its March 21st update to the community, many of the THPA's questions continue to go unanswered. So we would again ask the city administration to address the following questions. In its March 8th letter to Judge Wall asking her to consider placing a stop work order on the old Miami County Courthouse or ordering THPA to demolish the old courthouse, the city administration through council makes the following statement. Some of those conditions and deadlines from the December settlement agreement may have been violated or missed and the city has to date in the interest of bringing this matter to resolution, look the other way. We're, we're curious to know what those are. We're still waiting for an answer on that. Number two, what communication has Mr. Titterington had with the Miami County Building Department in recent months regarding the building? To put a finer point on it, did Mr. Titterington pressure the Miami County Building Department to require a load test or a more onerous load test? If anything, the city should be encouraging Miami County not to require a load test, given that it is a violation of the settlement agreement, is unnecessary and duplicative, and could potentially delay the reopening of West Main Street. And number three, how is the city supporting the THPA's efforts to repair the building and get the, straight re the street reopened as soon as possible? THPA looks forward to your responses. Um, are there any members of council who have any questions I can help address? If not, thank you. Thank you, Ms. Shreller. Anyone else? <clears throat> Seeing none, our next meeting will be April 15th. We are adjourned. <laughs>